Teachers are all showing up. It takes a little bit more lively around the office. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to open the evening with our um, public hearing for our proposed 2014-2015 budget. At this time, I'll ask uh, Dan Cox, our CFO, to come to the podium and make the presentation. At the conclusion of Mr. Cox's presentation, if anybody has any comments, please approach the podium and, and state your name. And if you'll keep your comments to about two minutes, we'd appreciate it. Okay, at this time, Mr. Cox. Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to present the 2014-2015 budget. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce the people that actually really put this budget together and manage it throughout the year and do such a great job. And that's Darren Rice, Executive Director of Finance. Darren. Uh, Janice Stowers uh, and Karen Garza, Accounting and Business Managers in our Finance Department. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> Our, uh, the theme of this year's budget is providing a strong foundation for education and growth. Before we get into the actual budget, I like to always take a few minutes and review some of the highlights of the year that we're just wrapping up and look back and see some of the key things we accomplished. I'm not going to go through all of these because many of them occur every year, but I have highlighted some, uh, some of the more unique ones this past <laughs> year in red. And item number four is we received a five-star rating by the 2013 Financial Allocation Study of Texas, the FAST report, one of only eight ISDs in Texas to receive a five-star rating for all years that the Comptroller's Department has uh, made this uh, designation. Uh, for the, they, did, they started this four years ago. We're one of only eight districts that have received the, the five-star rating for four years. We're also very proud of the fact that uh, this current year that's just ending, we gave a half cent tax reduction for the second year in a row. Our tax rate is $1.285, and it's, uh, it's the lowest tax rate compared to our peer, district. we'll, our peer districts, and we'll look at that a little more in a moment. And also, one of the things that we accomplished this year is we, uh, we used a budget surplus of $17 million to build an Oak Ridge ninth grade addition without using new debt for this project, and we're very proud of that. I mentioned the FAST report. These are the eight districts that uh, have received the five-star rating. What the FAST report is, is uh, about six years ago, the legislature wanted to implement a system of uh, accountability that we've had it with, for, Texas has long had a very great academic accountability system, but they wanted to add that accountability assessment, they wanted to add to that the financial integrity and financial performance as well as academic performance. So this five-star rating consists of two and a half stars for academics and two and a half stars for financial performance. So by getting a five-star rating, that means that we're in the top 20 percent of all the districts in the state of Texas in both academic performance and financial accountability. So. We're very proud of that. You can see the districts that we're with there. Uh, very, very good recognition. We also monitor each year our performance uh, as determined by the Education Resource Group. This is a private entity that monitors the performance of the 200 largest school districts in Texas. And likewise, their, their assessment or their analysis also take measures both academic and financial performance. <clears throat> So you can see that uh, 
the vertical axis, ac axis is academic performance, and the horizontal axis is financial performance. The objective is to be in the green box, and the closer you are to zero, zero, the, the higher your performance. If you were one, one, you'd be right at the zero, zero spot. So if you were the, if you were number one in academic performance and number one in financial performance, you would be at zero, zero. You can see our red star. We are the fifth ra rated district in the state according to their ass assessment. Uh, once again, we're very proud of that. We also like to look at our, we like to benchmark our budget uh, against the state averages as a percent of our budget, uh, as a percent. And I can tell you that when I started doing this 11 years ago, when we, the first time I did this, our spending and instruction was less than the state average as a percent of our budget. We looked at that and we decided that's really not what we want. We want to reduce our spending in other areas and move it into the classroom. Today, I'm happy to report that our spending in our budget for the 2013-14 year was 62.31% of our budget compared to the state average of 59.1%. That 3.2% re represents $11.8 million more going into, our into instruction than if we were spending at the state average. So this is a move that we made strategically over the years. Uh, we've reduced spending outside of instruction and increased spending in instruction. Another category that we like to point out is central administration. Our spending in central administration is less than half of the state average, 1.8% versus 3.8%. Our total spending uh, uh, on students is $780 per student lower than the state average. One of our objectives is ex excellent academic outcomes in a cost-effective cost manner. And we achieve that. I think the record demonstrates that, and that's one of the reasons that we get the high ratings in both academic and financial performance. I mentioned tax rates. When we started monitoring tax rates against our peer group uh, 11 years ago, we, we, we decided to compare to Spring, Katy, Humble, Cyfair, and Klein. The obvious reasons is those are the large districts in, in our Houston geographic area that are similar to us. We were not the lowest tax rate. Today you can see that our tax rate is 21.4 cents lower than the average of those other five districts well below those other districts. So we, uh, we're proud of that and we expect to keep that, uh, keep that uh, favorable advantage. We also monitor our fund balance. You can see that it's grown steadily over the years as appropriate as our budget has grown. Uh, the red areas on the budget are areas where we have uh, felt that we had uh, uh, enough excess in our fund balance to take some money out of our fund balance to use it for construction projects, primarily capital expenditures. Once again, when we do this, we don't use new debt to do that. So, uh, you can see that we've done that three times and this year being the fourth time. This is an obvious trend of our enrollment. It's been up and it's, we don't expect that to change. These are the actual numbers. We have seen enrollment growth uh, slow down in the last few years. However, we do believe that that is bottoming out and we expect to see that start to uh, increase again. Uh, this, this year that just ended, we had 1,080 growth. We're projecting 1,100 this year. We expect uh, this to be the, we expect this number to start rising uh, in the coming years. <clears throat> Certified property value is another key part of the budget. Uh, this has been a very unusual year in, in, a, in property values. We've seen a dramatic increase in the property values, up 12.6%, a $3 billion increase in property values, the largest ever in the district. And this has had a, a very a significant impact on our revenues for this year. However, it's going to bring into play the Robin Hood effect, I'm going to talk a little more about that later in the presentation. Uh, but basically, we're going to have very strong revenues this year, but we've got to be uh, uh, on alert for what 
can happen the following year, and I'm going to talk more about that in the presentation. <coughs> Our objectives for the 14-15 budget were to meet the needs of the 14-15 school year, provide a strong salary increase for CISD employees, provide a tax rate decrease for our CISD patrons, and preserve funding for the 2015-16 budget. This again uh, relates to the potential Robin Hood effect where the state recaptures some of that growth in assessed values. Looking at our 2014-15 funding uh, increase or available for our, our budget increases, we have 27.6 million primarily coming from that growth in assessed value and the growth and the 1100 increase in ADA projected. Uh, we had an unbudgeted surplus in last year's budget of 13 of 17 million dollars. And then the state has uh, has added a new twist to funding this year in order to better fund the teacher retirement system which is somewhat underfunded. Uh, they've added a 1.5% uh, uh, fee on, on, TIA, on salaries to all the districts. This first year, the state is funding that, so they're providing $3.5 million that that's going to cost our budget. Uh, however, going forward, we, there's no, uh, we do not know if they're going to continue to fund that. It may be funded locally. But this year, it's funded by the state, so it is revenue for us this year. Uh, I mentioned teacher salaries. Uh, we uh, have a nice uh, increase for teachers this year, $1,840 uh, raised for all teachers. Uh, our starting salary is $48,700. Uh, we think this is very competitive in the Houston area, and uh, we're very pleased with that. And uh, We've got a great, great group of teachers, and uh, we feel this is uh, a good raise this year. We also have personnel additions. Uh, the first line there is, is relates to the 1,100 student growth. That's the staffing at campuses required to uh, support 1,100 students. That's uh, 7.8 million. In addition, we have a number of program additions, which are additions that we uh, determined this year needed to be added uh, uh, to address understaffed situations in the organization. Uh, we, we had the opportunity with strong revenues this year to look at areas that, that we felt needed more support, and these are additions to address those. Total personnel increases of $9.3 million. This is a breakdown of, that, uh, of the additions at campus for the 1,100 students uh, additions, uh, the addition of 1,100 students. <coughs> these are... This is 150 positions and how they're allocated among the campuses or among the different uh, levels of schools. Uh, in other expenses, we have an addition of 300,000 for utilities. We're seeing, uh, we, we've, we've had an, a great trend in utilities for the last five years. We've cut our utility costs significantly due to our energy management program, but we've uh, we finally hit bottom and we're starting to see uh, utility costs go up now. We're seeing rates increase, plus we've got two new schools opening. Uh, this, in this increase is needed to address those issues. The second item is MCAD fees. That's Montgomery County Appraisal District. Uh, the Appraisal District has also been overwhelmed by, uh, by the growth in Montgomery County, which has been significant and is expected to continue. Uh, and of course, we're their largest user, and we get allocated a portion of their budget. This is the increase for the, for the appraisal district. We also are increasing supplies uh, necessary to support two new schools. Uh, in addition, uh, we have a fuel increase of 175,000. This is fairly common as we add students and routes. Uh, we also have 150,000 in the budget for innovative program grants uh, these are in-house grants that administration identifies something that's being done at a school that looks, or an idea to implement at a school. We wanted to have some money to fund those pilot programs to, to really test out those innovative ideas. Uh, we also put some 400000 in the budget for new software. Uh, 
LMS software's learning management system to facilitate online education and assignments. Uh, the safety alert software, some software uh, that we intend to install to uh, uh, allow rapid employee uh, connection with the police department in, in times of emergency. And then finally, we have insurance and other items for $100,000 for miscellaneous other items. So all of our proposed budget increases uh, are summarized here. We have <coughs> salary increases, which 3.5% on the midpoint for teachers and professionals, 4% on the midpoint for paras, auxiliary, and police, total of $10.2 million. I mentioned the personnel growth for 1,100 students, 7.8 million, one and a half million for personnel and program additions, one million dollar increase to our health funding uh, program, our health our health plan, uh, the 3.5 million for the increase in TRS contribution, and then 1.9 million for other uh, uh, other expenses. Total of approximately 26 million dollar increase in our budget. Last year's budget <coughs> revenues were $386 million. This included the $17 million surplus. 14-15 projected revenue increase is $31.1 million for total revenues of $417.2 million. Last year's budget was $369.1 million. We're looking at salary increases of $10.2 million, and then other expenses, all the other categories, uh, personnel additions and so forth, uh, 15.8 million for a total uh, increase, uh, total budget of 395.1 million. Uh, this results in a $22.1 million surplus. Uh, I'm going to talk a little more about the surplus in just a moment. The, uh, this is a $26 million increase, 7% uh, budget increase, larger than normal. However, if you look back over the last four years, during, four years ago, we cut our budget $20 million. So <clears throat> we've been working out of a hole since then. Uh, but if you look at our budget growth over the last four years, including that four years ago reduction, we've actually seen an average increase of 4% a year, while we've seen student growth and inf inflation growth uh, average 4.5%. And that's really our measure. Uh, we try to keep our budget uh, in line with in growth in, in, in student and inflation rates. <clears throat> so we, we've accomplished that over the four-year period. This is a picture of our budget. You can see that uh, it's very obvious that it's a salary-intensive business, people-intensive business. 88.7% uh, of our budget is salary and benefits. Uh, the next biggest area is contracted services, and in that category is utilities, is our largest expense. Under supplies and materials, our biggest expenditure is fuel. And then finally, under equipment and other, our largest expenditure is insurance. Our total budget, $395.1 million. This is our budget by function. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, but you can see that the total budget is $395.1 million. Uh, I will uh, highlight the fact that we spend 64% of our funding is from local taxes. 36% of our funding is from state revenue. There's a perception that we're a rich district. By some measures, we are a rich district, but we still get substantial funding from the state. So that's a, that's a very important fact. We're still getting 36% of our revenue from the state. This is what I really want to, uh, this is the key issue of this budget. And that's the potential of, that come, comes into play with the large growth and assessed value that we have this year. And that's the f potential for Robin Hood effect the following year, uh, when the state recaptures the increase that we were experiencing this year. The key important thing, uh, the key thing to understand is the state determines our, our budget or their funding based on formulas that are 
that are driven by enrollment, uh, ADA, uh, uh, average daily attendance, and our, our assessed value. However, in calculating our funding, they use the prior year's assessed value because they don't have the current information. So they use the prior year assessed value. So if you look at this, these are real numbers. <clears throat> you look at the 13-14 year, our assessed value, our actual assessed value is $23.9 billion. That generated local revenue of $236.8 million. In 2014-15, this year that's just coming up, our assessed value has increased $3 billion. That's going to generate local revenue of $268 million. However, the state is calculating their funding this year based off of last year's assessed value. So they're using the 239, the, the 23.9 billion number, and they, they determine that we're due $148 million. So we're getting a total revenue this year of 416 million. Now, <clears throat> those are actual numbers in those two years. In 2015-16, assume that there is no change in enrollment and there's no increase in AV for the year 2015-16. If that were to happen, now that's not going to happen, but if it were to happen, then the state would say, oh, your, local, your assessed value is now $26.9 billion, so you get two, <clears throat> they're, they're looking at the prior year, it's $26.9 billion. We actually, we get $268 million from local taxes because there was no change. And then all of a sudden the state determines that our funding is $116.8 million rather than $148 million. And all of a sudden, our revenues drop 31.2 million. That's where you get the state recaptures the revenue from the low increase in local assessed values. So we have very strong revenues this year, but if we don't see growth in assessed values and, pers and, and enrollment and changes in the funding formula, we could see a significant drop in revenues next year. And that's a very important point. So it exposes us to a significant drop in revenue. So we've got a $22.1 million surplus this year. We're, 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 we're saving that because we're probably going to need some portion of that next year. <clears throat> and that is the recommendation for our, our, our surplus. Our recommendation is to save it in the general fund balance. Uh, next to support the 2015-16 budget. Uh, it's important to point out that the 2015 Texas legislative session, next year's assessed value growth and enrollment growth will determine the available budget funding for the 15-16 year. Until we know, have a better feel for what those things are, we really don't know what our situation will be next year. So we're proposing that we save that $22.1 in our fund balance this year uh, and we reassess our situation a year from now. So that is the proposal. Uh, regarding tax rates, for the third year in a row, we're recommending a half cent reduction in the tax rate, bringing our tax rate from $1.285 to $1.28. Uh, this is 48 cents lower than the 2005-2006 tax rate of $1.76. We're proud of that. We think it's thick. As I think the record shows, it's uh, very favorable compared to other school districts, uh, and we're pleased with that uh, uh, that performance. And we 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 hope that the public is happy with that. Uh, what's next? This was our second public hearing. Uh, tonight we will also be presenting the budget for approval. Thank right. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cox. That uh, at this time, if there's anybody who'd like to make a comment, if you'll approach to the podium, state your name, and make your comments, please. All right, that concludes our budget hearing. Uh, Mr. Sanders. All right. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act 
Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 624. If you would please stand as Mr. Williams leads in the invocation and uh, Ms. Uh, Powell leads in the pledges. Thank you. If you will, please pause with me for a moment of silence to uh, reflect on world events, specifically events in the Middle East and here at home in Missouri, please. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, to Texas, one state, under God, and one and indivisible. Thank you, Ms. Powell. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next item on our agenda is citizens' participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? No. Well, all right. We will move on to item three, consent agenda. The board has been given the consent agenda. Are there any items that we wish to have removed to discuss specifically? If not, is there a motion? I move the approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right, item four, curriculum and instruction, elementary and secondary school, summer school report, Dr. Stock. This time I'll invite uh, Dr. Kathy Gibson, Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Education, and Dr. Curtis Nell, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come and give the report. Good evening, President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. This evening, uh, Dr. Null and I would like to present an update and a review of our summer school programs. Um, we had six summer school programs. I'll tell you a little bit more about these. Uh, Passport to Learning, Bilingual Program, Camp Star, KidQuest Academic, KidQuest Enrichment, and Extended School Year. In order to run this, these programs, it takes a tremendous amount of work and preparation. I'd like to introduce to you two of our main organizers and leaders. This is Edith Upshaw, who is the director of CNI, please stand up. And Dr. Pam Zoda, who is our director of federal programs and compliance. Thank you. A summer school principal offers the opportunity for, in this summer, 10 of our assistant principals to showcase their leadership skills. I'd like to introduce them to you as well. Uh, this evening, but Patricia Thacker, who is currently the principal interim at, at uh, Armstrong, who was a summer school principal at Ford. Uh, at Houston, Mrs. Christina Upshaw, who is currently the assistant principal at Houston. Mrs. Sunny Nolan, who was the summer school principal at Glenlock and is currently the assistant principal at Colson Tuff. Mrs. Sean Breeden, who was the principal at Milam and is the, also the assistant principal at Milam. Mrs. Krista McWilliams, assistant principal at, uh, at Reeves. Mrs. Laura Stone, assistant principal at Patterson and summer school principal at Wilkinson. Mr. David Kite, who is our special education lead, who was the summer school principal for the ESY program. Mr. Larry Bradfute, who is our assistant principal at Bosman and served as principal at Bosman. This is Teresa Waller, who is our assistant principal at Grangerland and served as principal for summer school at Grangerland. And Mrs. Treva Madour, who is our assistant principal at Mitchell and served as our summer school principal at Mitchell. Thank you very much. Our Passport to Lear Learning and Tuition-Based based Kid Quest Academic Program served our kindergarten through sixth grade students. It, the purpose of it was to enhance, our, enhance skills needed in the areas of reading, writing, math, and science. It was a half-day program that was held between June 11th and July 13th, and we had 1,291 students that participated. Our bilingual program was, is a program that is required by federal law to be offered to our pre-K and K students. We have gone above and beyond that, and we have offered supplemental summer school 
to both first and second graders. It is a full day program and it ran from June 11th to, to July 3rd and we had 1,534 students that participated. Camp Star is our very intensive targeted reading and math intervention program for our fifth grade students. If you remember, our fifth grade is under the Student Success Initiative. That means that these students have three tries at the STAR assessment. The first two tries are combined as for our accountability, for accountability purposes, and students that need that third try are able to take it in the summertime. After our first two administrations, we, have an, we had an overall uh, passing percent of 92% when this group of students uh, completed their testing, that moved, we moved from 92 to 94% in reading. Mathematics, uh, we um, had 94% um, after the first two administrations, and after these group of students took the math, we moved up to a 96 overall percent passing, which I think is very good. Uh, Quick Kid Quest Enrichment is what we, we refer to as our high interest summer school programs. We had six GT summer camp, experiencing robotics, band camp, orchestra camp, adventures in art. We had two sessions held at Mitchell Intermediate and 131 students attended. Our extended school year services are offered to students that may uh, need support over the summer. Uh, for loss of acquired critical skills of students or students with disabilities who have demonstrated significant regression or recruit, recruitment patterns. Participation is ARD committee based. We ran two sessions and 50 students participated. These are the expenditures for our summer school elementary program. We use a multiple sources, state, federal, local, and tuition based. and. Uh, with an ex total expenditures of $1,756,942. Um, uh, uh, this is one of our largest programs. 3,496 students participated by 277 teachers and 10 administrators. Good evening. I'm, I'm here to share the good news about our secondary summer school programs. Uh, they're truly a great benefit to our students. And I would point out, as Dr. Gibson just mentioned, the number of students that were uh, in attendance at the elementary summer school, and you also add the secondary summer school. The number of students that attend our summer school programs is significantly larger than the average size school district in the state of Texas. So essentially, we open and close a school district every summer. And in addition to the great instructional staff that we have that we pointed out, this doesn't happen without the work of a lot of people. And I know that we don't have everyone that put a hand on it here this evening, but we have representatives from a lot of these different departments and we'd just like to say thank you to them. So our human resources department, the great job that they do, technology, payroll, finance, uh, maintenance and custodial, CISD police, and transportation all do a fantastic job. So I'd just like to give those departments a hand. Thank you. We had great people on the campuses as well, and we have some of our principals here this evening that I would like to introduce. We had our uh, district-wide high school summer school was uh, completed at Conroe High School, and the principal there was Wes Henson, and he is an assistant principal at Conroe High School, or Wes. Uh, at, also at Conroe High School, we had our ESY program. Uh, the principal was Greg Coleman. He could not be here this evening. And at Irons Junior High, we ran a summer school program for Irons, Knox, McCullough, and York, and assistant principal from Conroe High School, Keith Dupre was our principal there, it was Keith. And finally, at Pete Junior High, we ran uh, our junior high program for Moorhead, Pete, and Washington, and our principal there was uh, the assistant principal now at Pete Junior High, and that's Chris Kimples. We can give a hand to these three guys. When you look at the big picture of our secondary programs, 110 teachers, 15 paraprofessionals, three counselors, one librarian, four nurses, six instructional coaches, and eight administrators uh, were there to serve our students this summer. When you talk about the types of programs that we offer, we offer the traditional credit recovery summer school. And many might think of when you think of summer school, those students that maybe fell behind in a class and needed to go back and regain that credit, we offer that. 
Uh, in addition to that, we offer initial credit courses on the high school level. Uh, in total, 916 students attended our high school programs. We have an online accelerated initial math credit program. That's a blended model of online teaching and classroom teaching for those students that want to advance in math. 83 students participated in that. In our junior high, we have credit recovery for those students that need the classroom credits, but also, as Dr. Gibson stated, our eighth graders uh, have that third opportunity to take STAR. And uh, we had similar results uh, on the secondary level. After the initial first two testings for our accountability, we were at 94% in both math and reading on the eighth grade level. Uh, after this third administration, we bumped to 96% in both of those. So very successful programs uh, as well. 104 students participated in our ESL academies. 34 students uh, participated in the GED program. And uh, Ms. Nicolini shared with me that uh, well over 20 of those students have passed uh, the GED this summer. So that's a, a great thing for them. And 35 students uh, participated in the ESY program. For our first time credit offering, so these are those classes that, that students may take. Uh, they, they take for a variety of reasons. It may be that they're attempting to graduate early. It may be that they're trying to provide themselves a little flexibility in their schedule. And they participate in many extracurricular activities on campus, but you can see the courses um, that are offered <coughs> there. Our financial summary, uh, I will point out, if you look at the bottom there, the total funds received uh, at 391,000 and our expenditures at 330, almost 339,000, uh, those numbers do not include transportation costs. So when those are added in, um, certainly we will, we will have uh, spent a little more than we brought in, uh, but uh, very healthy uh, as tuition is collected for those students. So in summary, 1,988 course enrollments in secondary summer school. 95% uh, of those courses were completed successfully. So we had 256 initial high school credits earned and then 413.5 repeat credits earned by our high school students. So overall, very successful summer. A lot of hard work by a lot of great people uh, paid off for our students. So when you look at it, a total of 1,815 students in our three locations and 147 staff members. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Noll. <clears throat> Dr. Gibson and Dr. Noll, thank you for your leadership. We appreciate that report very much. Next item is item five, administration bond referendum update. Dr. Stockton. Ms. Foster, if you'll come and share your busy summer with us. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to give you an update on the projects we've got in, in progress. <clears throat> we've taken to calling them capital improvements because they go beyond bond expenditures at this point as uh, Mr. Cox presented earlier in the budget presentation. Starting with the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus, uh, we added a significant amount of parking lot, uh, parking area to this campus. You see a picture here out in the, the front of the building. And this is an ongoing project, so it goes through uh, through next summer, actually, because it's a it's a building addition and renovation. The front door of this school is also under uh, a renovation to give the school a facelift. So we've made some alternate plans with the principals for first day uh, approach for the new student, uh, for the parents when they drop their kids off. So the uh, the front office is in an alternate location at this time. What you're seeing now are the foundations going in for the building expansions. This is a, a look at the uh, science labs areas. Uh, this building is getting science labs added, classrooms, art labs, and an expansion to the cafeteria. The Oak Ridge School Road Improvements, uh, which is a project that encompasses the entire Oak Ridge School Road from the feeder in front of uh, Oak Ridge Elementary on the Interstate 45 all the way around through the campus to Hauser Elementary at Woodson Road. What you're looking at here is, a, is a, a look across the front of Oak Ridge High School where the major part of this road work was uh, undertaken. Uh, at this time, I'd like to tell you that this, this roadway construction is open. Uh, we uh, were able to get the entire roadway in place uh, this summer. Striping is going down, signage will go on over the uh, course of the next uh, couple of months as we work with the county through some traffic patterns and some other issues out there. But traffic on this roadway should see some uh, some ease. Uh, we're not going to say that it's going to fix all the problems out there, but it should uh, alleviate some of them as we anticipate more growth on these campuses. 
attached to this project. Uh, this, pro this picture is a week old now. Uh, this is the uh, new connector to Woodson Road off of Hauser Elementary. If you drove by there today, you'd see that it's paved with curbs uh, and tomorrow will be open for their Meet the Teacher Night. And this is again looking how's it looking back towards uh, back towards the uh, Oak Ridge High School area, and it is uh, again uh, a lot of dedicated turn lane surface to try to give access to the campuses and still allow traffic to pass as people are turning in. Vogel Intermediate Editions again. This is a classroom edition. Uh, it is underway. The foundation structure uh, roof deck is in place. You can see the mechanical systems going in at this time. Knox Junior High. Uh, everybody's been accustomed to seeing this picture. The good news is, is this project is coming together very nicely. Uh, what you're seeing now is the uh, the finished product. The interior of the classroom is done, clean, ready to go back to school for uh, next week. Uh, the contractors are still there. They're cleaning up detail every day. But by and large, this school is uh, running now. And then for the first day of school, it should. Uh, almost be like we were never there. Uh, except we have new light fixtures, new ceiling, new air conditioning, new duct work, new fire sprinkler system. Uh, so the building should see a, a very, uh, we're hoping to see a significant improvement in the overall efficiency of that of that building operation. Our multi-campus front entrance security upgrades, as you recall, this project touched 24 campuses. So this is just a representation of what's, what's been installed. The equipment is, has been installed at all 24 locations. Uh, we spent last week uh, going over some details. This week, the contractor is there making the tweaks to those systems as they go uh, to make sure there's uniform, uniformity across all the campuses. Uh, next week, when staff is back, we should have the ability for the contractor to go back to each campus individually and train each individual front office staff, as well as some of our technology folks, uh, my department, some maintenance people, on how the system operates so that we can all uh, all be better attuned to what what we're putting in into our campuses. Our multi-campus skylight project, this affected six campuses, which were Anderson, Gladys, Giesinger, David, Powell, and Bush. Uh, if you recall, this is to eliminate the skylights in those buildings. Those skylights were at the end of their useful service life. Um, so we've changed those uh, buildings to uh, put actual uh, a roof structure over those over those skylight areas. What you're seeing are the, the hallways down the uh, uh, grade level classrooms, uh, and then what they look like over the uh, over the libraries and, and gymnasium. This project is about 95% complete. Uh, the work on the interior of the buildings will be done uh, by Friday this week. We've got about 50 light fixtures that are remain to be installed at the end of the grade level corridors at all six campuses. Uh, David is the one who sees the most work as it gets a new metal roof structure uh, and the, that metal roof panel is being installed now uh, and that's for the entire building not for the entire metal roof that was there on the original construction so David is being returned to its original original state Travis intermediate <coughs> if you recall this is a masonry project where we're replacing the exterior masonry and windows on the original, uh, the two oldest parts of that building. As you can see, the, the progress is moving forward. <laughs> this project is actually ahead of schedule. We were, our contractor was trying to put together a heroic effort to get the entire project done by the end of the summer, uh, 25 days of rain in June, mm -hmm. although good for the grass is bad for construction, um, slowed us down a little bit. So we're not quite done with the front door accommodations have been made with the principal on that campus for the opening day of school but within the next couple of weeks the front door should be open and then a couple of weeks into September the project should be complete and we begin demobilizing the contractor on, on that project the project was ex it initially expected to run into October we'll be finishing it in September <clears throat> the intent also is to return the building to more of its original appearance so the windows going in more closely match what was built in the in the late 20s and the 30s originally. The unique part of that project is the exterior wall uh, was a system altogether. So as we're doing this, we actually removed the exterior walls of those two two structures. Uh, so we're actually also return trying to return the interior of the building to a uh, uh, as it was originally built condition as well. Uh, things are not exactly in the place they used to be because our walls are thicker for insulation and, and other energy saving features. 
Uh, but the, the moldings, the trims, and stuff we're trying to replicate to the best of our ability. So it, it retains its, its uh, original architectural integrity. Our LED light fixture replacement project, that's a project that started uh, right after our last board meeting. Uh, at this point, uh, we have installed just short of 6,000 light fixtures at the, the Woodlands High School, Oak Ridge Elementary, and our crews are at the uh, Conroe High School now working. This week, they started working overnight, so they're working from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m., uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, with anticipation of finishing the entire 17,000 fixture project somewhere around November 15th. Uh, November 15th is the cutoff we've given the contractor to achieve the rebates for this project. Uh, completion and post inspection by our utility providers uh, has to be completed by the end of November. So we are on schedule with that project. And those are the major items. I mean, there are. We did have a busy mm -hmm. summer. We have lots of lots of loose ends we're still chasing, uh, but we are going to make it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Foster. We appreciate it. Any questions? <coughs> All right. Great job. Very good. Item six, business and finance. A adoption of the 2014-2015 official school budget. Dr. Stockton? I'll ask Mr. Cox to come back to the podium for the next several items. <coughs> President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2014-2015 official school budget as presented in the public hearing tonight. I recommend that you approve it. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed, and the motion carries. Item B is consider, adopt, and set by order resolution the 2014 ad valorem tax rate to support the 2014-2015 <coughs> budget, maintenance and operations tax rate, A, and B, debt service tax rate. Mr. Cox. <laughs> I, rec I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the attached order resolution to adopt a 2014 tax rate of $1.04 for maintenance and operations and $0.24 cents for debt service per $100 of taxable valuation to fund the 2014-2015 official school budget. Uh, the tax rates are required to fund the maintenance and operations and debt service budgets for the 14-15 fiscal year. State law requires that two tax rates must be adopted uh, by separate motions. Uh, the total tax, total combined tax rate of $1.28 per, per 100 is a reduction of one half of one cent from the prior year. I recommend that you approve this. Motion. Second. All right, that is a motion and a second for the maintenance and operation tax rate Correct. of one dollar and four cents. Is that there's actually a wording that has to be um, okay. set up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then let me move. All right. <laughs> that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of a dollar twenty eight, which is effectively a nine point eighty seven percent increase in the tax rate consisting of $1.04 per $100 for maintenance and operations rate and $0.24 cents per $100 for the debt service fund. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Item C is transfer of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Cox, please. I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $16 million of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund. The fund balance transfer of $16 million is required to service the debt during the 14-15 fiscal year and minimize the 2014-15 tax rate. Uh, the estimated general fund balance uh, at 831-14 will be $104 million. I recommend that you approve this. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And finally, item D, financial reports. Dr. Stock. Ms. Rice, if you'll come make the presentation, please. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure this evening to present to you all the uh, financial statements for the district. 
of the month of July. Uh, the first statement, the statements that we see tonight will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. First statement we're going to look at this evening is the balance sheet. It'll include our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. One of the things that we always track is our property tax collections. Y'all haven't seen it in the last few months, so I'll show that this month. Uh, collection percentages is flowing right along with where we've been in the past, and we feel very confident uh, you know, that collections are coming in well. Income statement will show the revenues and expenditures and fund balances for each one of the funds. You know, local revenues, once again, is our largest uh, source of revenues, property taxes that we just discussed. Um, Food services comes from food sales, and the revenues and self-funded come from premium, premium contributions. Uh, general fund balance, we're projecting an increase in the fund balance of about $3.1 million. As Mr. Cox said, that'll put us at about $104 million at the end of the year. Uh, debt service fund balance, projected a slight decrease of $4.3 million to about $36 million. Child nutrition, uh, no change in the projection, but we are showing a decrease in that in that projection. Uh, Self-funded insurance, as we know, summertime is big on insurance plans. Uh, once again, for us, it, it was. For the month of July, we had $2.7 million worth of revenues at expenditures of about $3.9 million. It's almost a $1.2 million uh, loss in the plan for the month. Uh, for the year, we've had $30.1 million worth of revenues, uh, $30.6 million worth of Expenditures for a loss currently in the plan of about $450,000. Participation in our wellness centers is still going well. We had uh, 447 participants at the Oak Ridge facility and 112 at the Conroe facility for uh, 559 for the month. And we're averaging about 582 each month at our wellness centers. A bond transition plan, the $109 million bond transition plan. We've currently spent $56.4 million. We have an estimate to complete of $49 million, leaving us with a projected forecast of $105.5 million, and that'll leave us with contingency in that plan of about $3.4 million. Investments for the month. At the end of June, we had $281 million invested. End of July, $228.7 million. Our pools and our capital one, our WAM is one day. <clears throat> our longer term investments are U.S. Treasury notes, 704 days given us a total wham of our portfolio of 87 days. The yield to maturity of our portfolio is 0.215. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is 0 0.025, so considerably above our benchmark. Any questions for Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Rice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Cox, I failed to mention, but thank you for your leadership in the budget. We appreciate it very much. Good job, sir. All right, we have no executive session items. All right, no, sir. No, okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> <That's> <laughs>